Hi everyone. So today I'm going to be talking about how to draw Lewis diagrams with extended octets. Okay, my previous video um, looked at how to draw simple Lewis diagrams. This is more what you will be asked to do for level three. Okay, so in the previous, when you learned how to do Lewis diagrams, you've always assumed that the central atom should have eight electrons on it. But some atoms with vacant d orbitals can take extra electrons. And I'm thinking particularly the likes of phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and xenon will be the main ones that you would deal with that take these extended octets. There will be some others as well. You can do, you know, antimony and arsenic and things like that, but they're unlikely to pop up. Not impossible but unlikely selenium is another one that's possible no, not really okay so you may be asked to draw lewis diagrams for molecules with up to 12 electrons around the central atom and that is a big change from previous years but we're going to follow exactly the same rules that we always use the only key thing to note is that you can never have more than double the maximum number of electrons in the valence shell. So, for example, phosphorus has five electrons in its valence shell, so it could have up to ten electrons around it. Xenon has eight electrons in its outer shell, it could have up to sixteen electrons around it. That's the sort of general process. But otherwise, we're going to go the same way. We're going to start by counting the valence electrons. So let's work through some examples here. And the first one I'm going to use is one you should be familiar with from organic chemistry, PCL5. And you might be asking yourself, well, PCL5, okay, yeah. So let's think, what have we got going on here? Well, phosphorus has five valence electrons. It's in group 15, it's got five valence electrons. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, and there are five of them which means that from our chlorines, we're going to have a total of 35 valence electrons. So overall, the total number of valence electrons is going to be 40. So whatever diagram I draw must show 40 valence electrons. So, got that in mind? Now, next thing we're going to do, we're going to start by laying out our atoms. And just like normal, we're going to start by putting the most electronegative in the center that's going to be our phosphorus it's also the one that requires the most electrons so phosphorus needs at least three chlorine one so phosphorus is going to go in the middle and then we're going to lay out our atoms around it now this is slightly trickier because of course we've got five of them so you have to kind of position them roughly equidistant around that central atom It doesn't matter if it's not perfect, right? Nobody's going to be sitting there with a ruler and a compass making sure you've got the angles nice and even. Okay, but that's going to be our starting point. We're going to lay out our atoms around that central atom. Okay, so there's our starting point. Okay, so we've got our atoms laid out. We've got one phosphorus, five chlorines, and now we're going to put in some bonds, one between each atom. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so the next question, of course, is how many valence electrons have I got? Well, I started off with 40 valence electrons. I've got five bonds there of two electrons each, which means that I have 30 valence electrons still to assign in my diagram and that's going to be my next step okay so i've got my basic structure laid out here i've got 30 valence electrons still to fill in i'm going to start off by putting those on my surrounding atoms so we've got our chlorines each of them of course already has two electrons from the bond so they each need six more 
Your drawing, of course, will be much better than mine because you're not trying to draw it on a computer with a mouse pad. You'll notice that I'm drawing the electrons in pairs. And I'm doing that for two very good reasons. First off, it helps me to remember how many I've drawn and count them easily because it's much easier to eyeball three pairs than six individuals. So this way I know I've got all my electrons in there and it's easy for my marker as well. Who can look at it and go, yes, she's got them all right. There's two there. Okay, now that happens to be 30 electrons, because 5, 6 is a 30, so that is all of my electrons in there. I have 8 electrons around each chlorine, I have 10 electrons around the phosphorus. So there's nothing else going on in that diagram. What I would like to do next is show you one that might be slightly more complicated, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so another example that I'd like to show you is SF4. And we're going to follow exactly the same process. We're going to start off with our number of valence electrons. Sulfur has six valence electrons. Fluorine has seven valence electrons, but there are four fluorines, which means that's going to provide me with a total of 28 electrons. Add those together, and I've got 34 electrons, valence electrons, that are going to make up my diagram. Okay, so what am I going to do? Well, just like normal, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by laying out my atoms. So, which one's going to go in the centre? Is it going to be the one sulphur or the four fluorines? Well, logic would dictate that we're going to start off with our sulphur in the middle. And just to make life easier, I'm going to go this way. And then I'm going to have a fluorine up here. And a fluorine down here. Okay, let's just make it look a bit nice. Okay, so that's my basic layout. One sulfur, four fluorines. Okay, so the next step is to draw lines to show the bonds. So we've got one between the sulfur and fluorine, two, three, and four. So we need to figure out how many valence electrons we've got left. Remember that we started with 34 valence electrons. We have just put in four bonds with two electrons in each, so there's eight valence electrons that we've accounted for, which means we have 26 left. Okay, so the next step, obviously, is to then put the valence electrons around the surrounding atoms. Having drawn out the basic structure, I know I've got 26 valence electrons left. I need to put valence electrons around each of my fluorines, my surrounding atoms. So I'm going to need six electrons around each fluorine. Try and do it more neatly than that. One, two, three, four, five, six. And keep going. Now I'm putting six valence electrons around each fluorine atom and I've got four fluorines and that's going to be 24 valence electrons that are going on around my fluorines. Now of course I had 26 valence electrons left so if I'm only putting 24 valence electrons around my fluorine atoms that means that there are two valence electrons left over and those two valence electrons will go on my sulfur atom. Just like so. Yes, it looks ugly. Okay, it looks weird to have those extra ones sitting around that central atom. I get that. But just do it, please. Okay, that's what happens. That's how it works. So we're going to put those final fluorine atoms around my central sulfur atom. And that is all done. 